Hi, everyone. Welcome to Search 3 launch day here at Humble. I kicked everybody out upstairs from headquarters, so they're all tearing their hair out upstairs, but Alfonso and Alfonso Jr. and Gustavo and the Mexico tech team are all working really hard to get this pushed out, so I don't care if we stay here all night. We will we will get it shipped tonight, but I thought I would take an opportunity to just kind of give you all some visibility into you know, how we see Search 3 setting up within the business and what we're working on here at Humble. So welcome to Search 3 launch day here at Humble. This is our safe harbor statement. So if you all can just take a few minutes to look at it, that would be great. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome to Humble. We are a Web3 blockchain company. Please keep in mind, guys, we're at a super early stage Web3 blockchain company, meaning statistically, we went public much, much earlier than other companies do. Um, we didn't go the Silicon Valley route. We didn't go the Wall Street route. Um, so that carries all the risks with it um, that you have of being uh, a shareholder, if you're watching this as a shareholder, of an early stage Web3 blockchain company. So please keep that in mind. And if that's not for you, no problem. Okay, so what is Web3? When I did my first tweet um, last year, I said, okay, just setting up Web3. And I didn't think that it was going to go so quickly in the public media, um, the conversation moving to Web3 and blockchain tokenization and all these things. So it's pretty cool to see what we're doing kind of front and center in the headlines uh, when you look at the financial media or the technology media. So here we are with Web3. Our company thesis is that Web3 will result in a tokenized economy, blockchain tokenization, um, that will be built on a series of new rails in blockchain that may offer some you know, faster ways to trade, track, pay, um, that don't go through as many middlemen, or you get a chance to start fresh on new rail systems on blockchain. So um, we think there's lots of opportunity there. We hope we're right. And we're taking our swing at helping define what that could look like as a company uh, in Web3. Just so you know, we are divided into products and services. So we have our consumer product lines, Search3, um, Humble, and, and more of a wallet and, and tools for navigating Web3 simply. And then we have our services business. So recently we founded the Humble blockchain services business, which is doing some pilot tests with um, US Air Force. We were recently accepted by the County of Santa Cruz to do a mobile wallet test with them to take some things online for government and, and pilot those things. So um, we hope to get more governments, uh, more government clients and more private sector clients working with us to try to move on to blockchain in ways that are sensible for them. So we're here to do that for anybody who is interested. Okay, so Web3, a transactional world wide web. So right now you have Web2, which is read and write, um, post a comment, leave a picture, post a comment type of thing. So that's web two. And then you have transact and verify. So that's where web three comes in. It's really in this transaction and verification layer. And that's where our products are contemplated in the market. So read, read and write, post a picture, leave a comment, and then web three, read, write, and now transact and verify. So moving to a transactional verified worldwide web. And the complexities of that are you're taking a web, which is pretty centralized right now under some fang you know companies and things like that Pre pretty hardcore web 2 um, centralized tenant portals on top of web 2 you're decentralizing that and then trying to build back up from that layers of commerce that make sense for people protect consumers uh, reduce middlemen or fees uh, but that also you know have some structure around regulatory and compliance and making sure that people are protected and get what they, they think they are getting when they transact in value on the web. So lots of complex uh, and, ex and exciting problems to work on. Uh, the way we see this setting up is we really view this sort of web 2.5 setup, meaning you have you know, a centralized public company like Humble, which is you know, a web 2 construct to be a public tech company and then you have Web3, which are these totally decentralized and new blockchain rail systems um, that can be for virtual currency or stable coins, 
or hybrid tokenization, uh, central bank digital currencies, et cetera. So you have web two with really centralized um, sort of constructs, and then you have web three uh, tokenization. And so we really see this web 2.5 where, you know, a central bank digital currency may use tokenization, but it's being issued by a central, um, a central entity. So we really think that where this nets out is that blockchain technology, the underlyings of that will be used in different ways. Some of it will be really hardcore web three exercises, and then some of it will be more moderated web 2.5 exercises that harness blockchain tokenization, um, but perhaps still have in play centralized entities that are issuing them, governing them, regulating them, uh, which is just fine. And we look forward to, to being a part of that migration. Okay, so we like to zoom out and look at things historically. Um, you have new tech markets, financial markets, and now financial technology markets. And so um, with charge cards in the 1950s, you had the ability to step back and not have to um, hand someone a paper bill or a physically minted coin to pay for dinner. Um, you know, with the 2000s, so in 2000, you start to see fiat peer-to-peer -peer systems uh, emerging where people are sending money in a digital format um, starting in around the 2000s. And what we see going into the 2020s is blockchain tokenization. So using mobile wallets to start to be able to tokenize aspects of your commerce. Um, yes, programmable money like central bank digital currencies or stable coins or Bitcoin, um, but also these new hybrid tokenization layers um, that can serve to disrupt areas of service in the private sector or the public sector. And so that's our thesis is taking blockchain tokenization and putting it into uh, both the search engine and then the web wallets so that people can start to transact in value on this read, write, transact and verify web. So we are proposing one of the first ever full funnel Web3 stacks in the world. You have Web3, which is to be totally decentralized. No one's supposed to own that. But underneath that, we propose Search3, which is the search engine that will come out at some point tonight. Um, mail3, that's not launching today, but it's the mail client, the privacy focused mail client that will go with that. Um, so that's on our roadmap and is already being worked on. And then you have Humble, which is a simple set of tools um, like the Humble Web Wallet to start to navigate Web3 and transact and verify and value a hybrid tokenized economy um, that we want to help people migrate towards, um, such as on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Blocks, Polygon, Solana, Gnosis. So taking these really decentralized blockchain rails and allowing people to start to step into those technologies in ways that they can access and understand and that hopefully can help them uh, in their daily lives. So what are the market problems and solutions of Web3? Okay, so the market problems are that it's hard to find. Like straight up, Elon Musk tweeted, where's Web3? I can't find it. You know, and he wasn't wrong, by the way. Like that's, it is hard to find. So part of the reason why we created Search3 is so that people could have a simple front door to Web3 so that they could start to find it. Um, the second thing is that Web3 can be complicated to transact in value, meaning once you're into Web3, there's still this very disconnected set of tools just by nature that are very fragmented. So it's still, even if you find, you know, some Web3 marketplace or you start to try to buy your first NFT, sometimes setting up a wallet can be very complex. Um, it can be confusing for new users and so on. So um, we see a disconnected set of tools for consumers. Um, and for us, we think that's a good thing because we hope to help. And then lastly, trust and verification. You can't just totally decentralize the web onto blockchain without making sure that there's products and services that people can lean into to secure and verify themselves against fraud and forgery. Okay, so we took the main three market problems of Web3 and have attempted to devise market solutions that would solve for those three things. So search three, a simple front door to web three, humble, a set of consumer tools for web three, uh, and then verified by blocks, a trust and verification layer to make sure that you are trading or paying for what you think you are getting on the decentralized web. And with that, we introduced search three, a front door to web three, helping people easily find web three and then start to, to transact on top of that uh, with their humble web wallet and their connected wallet. 
So here's the product stack. We are really excited to introduce this sort of core magnet that is Search3, uh, meaning this is your front door to Web3. And then around that, we have the humble wallet. So bringing in digital assets, NFTs, verifiable credentials, things that allow you to step up to the counter and transact in value between you and another person, uh, you and a corporation, or you and a government. So search three is the core magnet, the front door, and then the product line that sits around that so that you can read, write, verify, and transact on Web3. Okay, I wanna be really clear with this slide. Um, this is not a product roadmap. This is us zooming out and proposing to the market what Web3 can be. So meaning, you know, you have tech companies that propose what Web1 could be, propose what Web2 could be. Thousands of them failed, some of them succeeded. We are proposing some of how Web3 could set up or how we can migrate customers from Web2 to, to Web3. So please do not view this as a product roadmap. It's simply a high level overview of how we see this setting up. Uh, both for Humble, but for the market at large. So if you look at the core functions of Web2, web, news, images, video, those things will be covered off in Search3. So we will cover off some of the core aspects of Web2 search in Search3. Um, but yet we also propose an additional migration into the decentralized web. So that's things like a government desk, where if governments choose to participate, um, we can either help them or give them automated tools to start to take some of the things that they have that are buried in paperwork or um, trips down to the office to wait in line, um, things that are really inhibiting equitable access to government, um, perhaps layering on additional fees or bureaucratic layers that we can start to eliminate um, through some of these automated government processes on blockchain. So that's some of the things we'll be working on in government. Um, we have the NFTs. Uh, we are one of the world's first search engines to launch cross-chain NFTs, uh, search, NFT search, cross-chain NFT search. So uh, looking across Solana, Polygon, Blocks, Ethereum, Gnosis. So I'll get into that a bit later, but not only searching for NFTs, but then finding where they're listed, um, perhaps seeing if they're verified or not. Those are some of the things we're working on there. Um, certainly you have the crypto market. So we'll be bringing in new ways to buy, sell, and exchange crypto. Um, through our custodial partners. Um, and then, you know, metaverse items. So uh, again, with metaverse, that's a longer form conversation. You know, people who build content have to meet the market where it's at, right? You make Top Gun 2, people are going to the theaters this weekend um, and spending, you know, over $100 million on that film um, to see it. So that's, you know, that's someone making content that is where the market is. The market was ready to get back to movie theaters, et cetera. So the metaverse isn't there in its entirety yet, right? People are working on it. There's really cool illustrations of it already. But, you know, you saw someone like Mark Zuckerberg from uh, Facebook or, or now Meta um, say, hey, you know, this is something that we're looking at in sort of a 10 to 15 year view um, and so on. So, so that's going to take time. And the people who build content um, videos, digital content, you know, 3D content, immersive content, educational content, um, cinematic content, all that stuff is going to need to migrate, uh, if the market's there, to metaverse, and that's not going to happen overnight, if at all. So um, the metaverse is something where we see in the future really cool experiences that you can drop yourself into. Um, to have more connected, connected experiences with people around the world, but that is going to take time. Um, our goal is to certainly kind of see how that um, evolves in the market, but then provide people with a front door to get into the metaverse, um, give them simple tools to enter the metaverse, and then find the best pathways for them uh, to enjoy the metaverse uh, through either partnerships or um, things that we're building our own uh, as gateways into that environment. So that's a very long-term lens with which uh, we would ask you to view that component of Web3. So we take people from these sort of very core Web2 functions and search, expand the view to different Web3 activities, and then migrate people over into this set of new engagements through uh, the web wallet. So uh, Humble Wallet, you have uh, tokenized marketplaces that will evolve, um, that we'll need to send people to. Um, and then certainly we think there will be a whole slate of new financial, both traditional financial products 
and DeFi financial products um, that move into a tokenized format. And we look forward to serving those conduits through Search3 as well to help people discover those products and see if they're right for them and so on. So um, that's what we'll be working on. And, and what you're essentially doing is you're building rail cars for this new set of rails that, that exists both for you know, main chain, side chain, and even some off chain stuff that we'll be, that we'll be looking at um, to help power sensible computations for people as they're sent out to these different rail systems to, um, to experience the tokenized economy. So again, this is a very big picture, long-term view. It is not intended as a roadmap. I just wanted to zoom out for you all so that you can see kind of how we whiteboard what we think Web3 can be and how we intend to try to serve it uh, over time. Okay, with that, I'll present to you sort of the front door to Search3. Uh, this is tonight's features that are going out um, overnight tonight, and we will certainly continue to build on this over time. So again, as I mentioned, we will cover off sort of the core Web2 functionality. So web searches, images, news, videos, and then we'll get into the other stuff, cross-chain NFTs. So we will be one of the first um, search engines in the world to do cross-chain NFT lookup uh, by contract, by wallet address, et cetera. So I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so web images, NFTs, news, videos, and crypto. So you can see here some traditional text-based outcomes. We, we don't think that part of the web goes away. It's certainly something that, you know, has become the sort of the yellow pages of the web. And we want to be sure to work back and serve that business while also moving folks into a more dynamic web three search environment. Um, you have news. So um, surfacing things that, you know, people may want to see while still preserving uh, privacy for the customer. Uh, images, so we'll provide robust images there as well uh, for different uh, inputs. And then now we get into some of the more Web3 elements. So this will be one of the first uh, search engines in the world where you can look for NFTs by name, wallet address, contract, across Ethereum, Polygon, Blocks, Solana, and Gnosis. Um, so here's just kind of an example. You type in BAYC. Uh, it comes back with price, description, details, and then some of those kayak or price line type of functionalities with, hey, where can I buy this thing as well? Um, so we'll, we'll provide that as well across marketplaces. Uh, as you can see here, we'll also have a sort of verified and not verified um, as well. Fraud and forgery have been major e issues, even at the highest levels of the price point in NFTs. And we can't move to a tokenized economy across all manner of NFTs um, if we don't have verification. So we propose a verified by blocks layer that will help people um, be able to authenticate NFTs either as creators or as purchasers. And again, we really think that NFTs are in the first inning. We don't think um, that NFTs will end with being um, sort of art or IP collectibles. We really think that NFTs will touch all manner of vertical markets. So we're excited to help um, frame up the simple tool sets for this tokenized economy as it expands into different um, into different vertical markets, not just um, not just apes. So you'll be able here to connect over 100 different wallet products. Um, we wanted this to be a really inclusive, um, non you know non vendor lock in type of environment. I just don't believe in that. So. Um, a, will be preserving a lot of your privacy, but then B, allowing you to use whatever transactional tool set um, that you want on top of the platform. Um, I think a big knock on big tech has been, hey, once they get you in the environment, they monitor you, they start to key in on you, they monetize you, <laughs> and uh, they create vendor lock-in scenarios where they're basically creating a tendency for you on the web. So our goal is to decentralize it, allow you to use within the humble wallet, um, whichever types of products you want that are convenient for you. So we're eliminating some of those barriers to entry or some of the consumer complexities so that you can not only discover Web3, but quickly get into it with the tools you like um, and start to transact and verify on the web. So here's kind of a sample wallet, Ethereum, Blocks, uh, ApeCoin, DAI, uh, some NFTs and things like that. So. Um, you'll be able to have a pretty robust wallet product. We'll also be adding things like verifiable credentials that will allow you to keep um, medical records, 
uh, certificates, licenses, um, things that you would need to transact um, quite immediately with government uh, or private sector corporations that can authenticate you um, both you know, in terrestrial environments, but also the metaverse. So this will be a place where you can authenticate who you are, you'll have your verifiable credentials, and then you can lay that on top of the web and start to quickly transact in value on top of Web3. So it'll get really exciting as that wallet product gets more built out. And as you start to have your person authenticated and tokenized, um, it can eliminate, we believe, a lot of paperwork um, and bureaucracy as you start to have these tokenized digital assets, uh, verifiable credentials as an overlay or a simple tool set on top of this front door to Web3. And then we'll have some charts, you know, buy crypto, things like that through custodial partners that we'll refer you to. Um, so that'll get fun too. And you'll start to, I think, again, go back to virtual currency, stable coins, central bank digital currencies, hybrid tokens. Uh, so helping people research and understand what the tokenized economy will be about and how it can be of access and value to them on Web3. Finally, I wanted to share with you some future concepts. So again, please, these are just future concepts. They are things we are working on and that we have in demonstration environments. But I just wanna just again, disclaimer this, I'm not giving timelines. I'm not giving any kind of clear guidance around these product lines. I just simply wanna show them to you so that you can see some of what we're working on in the lab as well. So this is just a quick video of our government services section, uh, a metaverse referral section, and then also origin assurance, which is uh, the ability for people to not only collect an NFT, but then also track or collectibles or merchandise um, I, all the way from factory to floor or farm to table. So um, it's not, we use an NFT for this example, but we really believe that origin assurance will have uh, implications for marrying digital authentication with physical goods and that that's a really important part right you have web2 marketplaces that have been overwrought by fake goods fake ratings fake reviews so we have an origin assurance product that will help people marry blockchain authentication with verifiable credentials and physical goods and if we can get that right um, again from farm to table or factory to floor it will have implications for government manufacturing physical goods, collectibles, merchandise, et cetera. So a very exciting uh, opportunity if we can get that right. So here's a quick video for you. So here's kind of the government example. Again, this is just a hypothetical example of a county. Things you would be able to do with them. Um, right now, fictitious business names oftentimes are a trip down to the office. You have to wait in line, you got paperwork. Now we can do this with a um, blockchain-based set of verifiable credentials should the government choose uh, to be a part of a pilot program in this regard. Um, the second video is about origin assurance. So in this scenario, you are collecting an NFT, which comes with it some physical items like a football, a signed jersey, uh, and a VIP ticket experience. So this would be basically a bundle where you're buying this player's NFT but then you're also getting his signed jersey, his signed football, um, some tickets to meet him, and all of that is coming as an authenticated bundle on blockchain um, using some RFID technology and some QR codes. And then lastly, the metaverse, again, very long form. Please don't view this as a right now thing. We do think shopping malls are gonna move online. There will still be wonderful shopping malls in person, but we think a lot of shopping malls are gonna move online, travel, stadium experiences, educational and simulation environments, um, real-time meetings and conferences, meetup experiences will move into this rich metaverse environment. So as that happens, we want to provide simple tool sets and entry points for people to be able to enter and enjoy the metaverse uh, over time. Okay, so I just want to be clear, we showed a metaverse example. Um, although there are metaverse clients being built out right now, we do think that a robust metaverse that offers all the many things of shopping malls or stadiums or tokenized discounts, loyalty and affinity programs um, in a robust state will take years to build. So please you know, contain expectations there. Um, government services will require mutual development, meaning 
we can build all the government tools in the world, but if the government doesn't want to participate in that, you know, cities or counties or federal governments around the world, um, then we will not, you know, be able to serve those clients in either a manual capacity through humble blockchain services or an automated capacity if we build those tools um, for them to automate themselves. So we will build both, um, but it will require mutual development um, from governments to be able to participate in that. So I want to put that heavy rider or disclaimer on it. Um, and then lastly, the origin assurance demos that I show are not reflective of any partnerships or anything like that with people or leagues or anything. I just showed you an example of um, how an NFT could be packaged with physical collectibles and then shipped to your door, meaning there's huge fraud and forgery issues in the physical markets, right? Merchandise, collectibles, um, things like memorabilia. So we want to start to think about how we can marry blockchain with real world uh, authentication and technology on that. So that's the purpose of that example. Okay, so that's your demo of Search3, what we are working on and what we're delivering tonight. Um, our company focal points that I would leave you with, we have really learned that we want to develop scalable core technologies that we can control. So what you see with Search3 is we are building our own search engine because we can control it. Um, we, can, we can determine when it's built, when it's shipped. Um, it doesn't have a lot of regulatory complexities. So we are focused on developing scalable core technologies that we can control. Um, we are also focused on consolidating our product lines, meaning a front door to Web3, and then simple tools that go around that, as I showed on the previous slides, integrating on top of the search engine. So consolidating product lines, front door to Web3, tools for navigating it. We are working to reduce costs, drive revenues, and raise more capital. And we are going to be working on more educational content and tutorials. We heard you on that feedback. We know you want to learn all about Web3 um, and all about the tool sets that you can equip yourself for um, in case the world does move uh, to a blockchain technology or blockchain economy over time. Uh, you want to be ready for it. And so we'll provide some educational modules of how we think that might set up. Okay, and then lastly, we have Blocks Talk, which we filmed for the first time this weekend. That's just a safe blue sky environment for uh, people from Humble to share with you what they're working on. You can get to know them better um, and talk a little bit more about the Web3 blockchain economy and where it could go and start to give you all some of those educational and content pieces as well. We have some really cool, smart people working around here, and I want to make sure that they're being showcased and that you get to know them and that they can share not only the things they're doing here and the work they're doing, but then also where they see uh, the market going in the future. So I hope you enjoy that as well. Um, please beat up Search3 as hard as you can over the next few days and weeks and months. Let us know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Um, your use of the product ends up training the algorithms better anyway. So thank you for doing that. And then of course, we'll manually fix anything um, that you see that we need to do better as well. So thanks again. Great to be with you and we'll talk soon. Thanks.